Hear the latest reporting and analysis on the big stories of the day on the Daybreak Insider podcast. It's top-notch reporting from SRN News, along with the sharpest insight from Hugh Hewitt, Mike Gallagher, Dennis Prager, Sebastian Gorka, and the voices of townhall.com. The Daybreak Insider podcast. It's your first look at today's top stories. Available at Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, and at salempodcastnetwork.com. Tired of dealing with vein disease? Have your symptoms gotten worse? Oh, these spider veins are ugly. My legs and ankles are always swollen. My legs are tired of standing all day. While some symptoms can be managed by lifestyle changes, by way, other factors are out of your control. Get help from the experts at Vein Clinics of Hawaii. To learn more about your treatment options, call 427-5565 or visit veinclinicsofhawaii.com. Aloha, Hawaii. It's time for the Vein Clinics of Hawaii radio show. Their team's approach to diagnosing problems and developing solutions and treatment plans are beyond compare. So let's get started with your host of the show, Mike Buck, and medical director, Dr. Randall Julith of the Vein Clinics of Hawaii. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, it's it's one of the fastest hours in radio, and we, since we started doing the show uh, hundreds of shows ago, uh, we, we've come to find out that there's so many uh, folks here in Hawaii uh, that we can now delineate and differentiate between different groups. And I like it when we get patients in here or when we do case studies. And a lot of times you'll hear something, uh, you know, in passing, I've got this or I've got that, or you see it on TV. But when you can hook a person to it, and what it means to be that person and, and how that person's life can either be enhanced or, or made, you know, certainly different and better uh, by, getting, uh, by getting things looked at. And although some of these things may sound very off, big and wordy in the beginning, a doc has a way to break it down. And today I love it because we're going to do a case study on something that I know a little bit about, and it's called superficial venous thrombosis. And doc, that concludes my medical experience. Okay, <laughs> I was, I was going to. Co- I want to compliment you. you. You said that very nicely with yeah, authority yeah, too. Yeah. Well, you know, the thing is, doc did uh, send me a, a couple of uh, sheets about what we're doing today, and I practiced it a few times. Just to make sure. <laughs> yeah. But but you know, it's true that a lot of people think they've got one thing and have another, and I know we're going to cover that. But because uh, this particular guy. Uh, relates to so many people here in Hawaii. I thought it's, mm-hmm. it's a great way to put actually not just as a disease, but to how it affects somebody's age and performance and health. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I wanted to talk about this particular patient because, um, uh, yeah, he had something that we call superficial venous thrombosis, uh, you know, phlebitis. Mm-hmm. Uh, that kind of thing, and um, it's a fairly common problem. I mean, it's it's not uh, infrequent that we mm. see somebody that comes in uh, with you know phlebitis, yeah. and um, so uh, and I think that in the past we've sort of minimized uh, the the potential problems that might come along with mm. uh, this process, mm. superficial venous thrombosis, uh, and uh, and and even yeah. I know you know going through medical school and training, uh, it was always sort of you know kind of fluffed yeah, yeah. over. I mean, you know, nobody got too excited about you know oh, it's just an SVT. It's a superficial yeah. thing. It's not going to hurt you or whatever. But uh, I think the more we learn about it, uh, the more we're understanding that uh, you know there are some uh, significant repercussions that come along with it, uh, and uh, we have to treat it with respect. Yeah, I was going to say anything that can just sit there and, and hang. Uh, and, you know, I've become so attended, gang, uh, ever since Doc and I started doing the show. Many of you, I, you may or may not know this, not only do I host the show with Doc and help him facilitate getting the thing on the air, but I'm also a patient and been there and done that. And this is, I've got some of these things. And so I think that what what you don't get looked at might come back to bite you later because what might be underneath that superficial stuff is what worried me until right. until, until mine got addressed and 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 repaired. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, yeah, and, and that's exactly it. What <laughs> what's brewing underneath yeah, yeah. the uh, superficial process that uh, the patient comes in with and and sees and it, you know it's a it's a definite annoyance and um, you know a frustrating kind of thing to deal with because it doesn't go away overnight, but. Uh, this patient is uh, 55 years old. 
Uh, he was uh, treated for high blood pressure and uh, hypercholesterolemia and otherwise mm-hmm. healthy. I mean, those are two very, very common big, things. Big guy, people, regular size? Or uh, medium, yeah, medium, medium build. Medium, okay. medium build and... Um, lucky, because that could have been... Uh, more problems. Huh? Sure, yeah. absolutely, especially as it pertains to mm-hmm. venous problems. But um, yeah, just a you know normal guy, normal normal active guy, uh, no real other significant past medical history. He'd never had a history of known venous disease in the past. Uh, but uh, he uh, and he works offshore, so he he's out for two weeks at a time, mm-hmm. and then he's home for two weeks. By the way, no drugstores out there. No, no, no hospital, not, no ERs. Not out there, yeah. not out yeah. there in the <laughs> middle of the ocean. Um, so, uh, and that was his concern, sure. you know. So, uh, so he had he had something happen to him, and he was going to be leaving to go again out for another two week stint. Uh, and uh, this was a couple days before he was leaving, so he was concerned about this, yeah. and so that's why he showed up in our office. Uh, and what he had was that he had a sudden appearance of a firm, warm, red, tender area uh, in the mid-calf, mm. more on the inside, mm. uh, and uh, and it was painful. And, uh, can, and he can was you just concerned. imagine, you can just imagine, Doc, as he's contemplating going out for two weeks and thinking, yeah. if, if this is it like now and there's no doc out there, what may happen in two weeks' time? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, two weeks' time, something's slow as molasses, right? But it sounds to me like you're going to explain that this is a little bit more up up in the front page because mm-hmm. it, it's, mm-hmm. it's itis, it's swollen, it's red, it's it's stuff that you don't want. Yeah, yeah. right. Well, <clears throat> not only do you not want, want what's going on at that you know exact moment, but you also have to be concerned about you know what it might mean otherwise. Sure. Um, and uh, so the guy had a fair amount of intuition. I mean, I I, uh, I was impressed by his motivation to have it checked out uh, because you know something told him that gee, I need to ha- get this defined mm-hmm. so that I don't have a problem when I when I'm out in the middle of the ocean somewhere and are not going to be able to get back yeah. immediately. Um, so, uh, so anyway, this had, this process in his leg had popped up a couple days before he came in. Um, and it wasn't getting worse, uh, but it didn't seem to be going away. So, I mean, that's what he was concerned mm-hmm. about, uh, because he, again, in the back of his mind, he's going out to, <clears throat> into the ocean in two days and, uh, he wants to have things a little better defined and know, you know, what, what's going on mm-hmm. and what he should be doing about it. So, you know, in, in particular, and I, I remember he he came in and he said, doc, do I have a blood clot? Um, and, and I think most people, you know, most people know that, uh, <laughs> blood clots yeah. are not good. No. And, and I think that most people have this idea that, uh, you know, you can get blood clots in your legs, even though they may not know exactly what it's all mm. about. But, uh, I think the concept of developing blood clots in the legs and those clots sometimes breaking loose mm. and going to your heart, lungs, wherever, in creating some, you know, major health issues. I think most yeah. people know that. Well, you know, you've, we've, we've, we talk a lot about travel. And, you know, and that travel is one thing, and that's an airplane ride. It's five hours, eight hours, 12 hours. But this guy you're talking about, travel two weeks. Mm-hmm. I mean, even though he may not be going in a straight line thousands of miles, he certainly is putting in a lot of mileage out there during the two-week period. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and uh, you know, he's out in the middle of the ocean, and no matter what he was on, a boat or whatever, uh, it's not like he's going to be tremendously active. He's probably going to be a little less active than he otherwise would be when he's on, you know, solid yeah, ground. Yeah. So, the, you know, there's the, there's that aspect of it, too. Um, so uh, so he was concerned about a blood clot. And um, he uh, I asked him about trauma. Uh, you know, when somebody comes in with a red mass on their yeah, leg, yeah. you know, that's one of the questions, uh, you know, do any trauma. <clears throat> Excuse me. It didn't seem to be related, or or, or nor did it actually mm-hmm. look like an infection. Mm-hmm. Uh, he had no reason to just pop up with an infection in his leg. Um, so uh, you know, we were just kinda, you know kind of putting the pieces together. Um, he uh, again, he had had no prior vein treatment. He didn't have a history of uh, you know venous disease that he knew about. 
Uh, he had never had a blood clot. He didn't have any bleeding disorders, uh, you know, either bleeding too much or clotting too much. Um, and he wasn't on any medications that were concerning. So, uh, again, it was a fairly you know, clean slate as far as the guy's past medical history goes. Pretty interesting uh, how he had or somebody had the foresight to see, uh, to see especially see you. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, I mean, uh, obviously because you, he thought it was a clot. So if if he thinks it's a cloudy bit to go to a vein doc, um, however, w- once again within the profession, aren't those symptoms uh, could be for several things? Oh yeah, you know you had to go through a process right to determine not only what exactly he had, but then what to, how to treat it. Right, yeah. right, yeah. I and I don't know exactly what gave him that kind of intuition. Luck, it's uh, blind, <laughs> blind luck. Maybe, I think maybe that was it. But yeah, he got to the right place, mm-hmm. and and I think we were the first people that he came to. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, you know, again, he. I think that he had in the back of of his mind. Gee, do I have a blood clot? And if I have a blood clot, should I be going out in the middle of the ocean in two days? So, so I asked him about you know when we when we think about venous disease in general, we talk about family history, mm-hmm. and I asked him about his family history. His mother had varicose veins, um, and uh, I forget whether she had ever been treated for them or not. But uh, the father himself did not have any vein disease but he kind of thought that maybe the father's sisters or somebody in the family had had uh, you know vein disease so uh you know he very likely had you know the the genetic component that we talk about you know most most vein disease i think uh you know starts out as a uh uh, an inherited kind of problem, and then it's either you know manifest further because of uh, you know life experience and activities. But um, so he very likely had you know genetic influence from both mm-hmm. both sides of the family with respect to possibly having you know a uh, venous disease himself. So um, on further questioning, then you know I, I was asking him about a uh, swelling. You know, did did he have uh, swelling when he was on planes or in long car rides? Uh, did he have, uh, you know, muscle cramping, mm-hmm. fatigue, achiness, you know, uh, pain just in general? Uh, and he had had some of those symptoms. And, um, uh, you know, in, in our conversation then, you know, it became uh, clear to me w- with his description that, uh, in the area where he had developed now this, mm-hmm. you know, red inflamed area, he had previously had a fairly large cluster of varicose veins that he knew about mm-hmm. and had never really done anything for. Um, and uh, and this is one of the reasons why we why we sure. treat the disease yeah. is to avoid uh, this kind uh, of stuff. By the way, when that happens, when you say that he presented himself, came in in that condition, does that sometimes occlude or cover? The varicose veins underneath, so you can't really see yeah. them for a while, right? Yeah. So, and, and that's what uh, that's what happened. He he said, "Well, gee, in this area, yeah. uh, I used to have varicose veins. Guess what? You, st- you still do, <laughs> you still but do. you just can't see them. Yeah, exactly. That's what happened to me a little bit. Yeah. Me. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so, uh, so anyway, we yeah. uh, you know our our presumptive diagnosis was uh, you know SVT superficial venous thrombosis. You know, uh, lay people use the term phlebitis a lot, which is an accurate term. Thrombophlebitis is another term, um, but uh, it's a and it's a clot. It's a superficial clot. And again, mm-hmm. we'll we'll talk a little bit more about that. I, I remember, Doc, if, you, if and we I think we talked about this several programs ago. I think it was during the presidency of Nixon. Mm-hmm. Uh, that, that 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 term came out because he was ill a couple of times and it was said to be this phlebitis. Didn't that make a lot of people say, "Hey, I'm kind of like that too." Mm-hmm. It's not that they're inventing a way to suffer something, but maybe a lot of people found out about it because any celebrity that gets a certain thing, do you find Michael J. Fox and oh, yeah. some of these other things? What people start saying, you know, I really admire this person. He's really going through a lot, and I think I might have some of these symptoms. Can I get checked? Yeah. I think that's good, don't you? Oh, I think yeah. it's good, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, the uh, when when people of you know, people in the media, news or celebrities yeah. or whatever, when they, you know, feel inclined to, you know, talk about that kind of stuff, it's, yeah. it's always a good thing because, sure. uh, you know, uh, people are able to recognize signs and symptoms. Maybe they didn't know mm-hmm. that they had it, and uh, so it kind of clues them in and also makes them feel a little more comfortable to, 
you know, be to look for investigation uh, for those types of things. But so we examined uh, we examined the patient. Uh, you know, we look at pulses, and uh, his pulses were fine. That we do we look at pulses because of the arterial side of the circulation. Uh, the arterial side is the the side that brings blood down to you know the feet, legs, wherever. Uh, and uh, it's uh, it's a pretty easy process to uh, you know feel the feet and feel the pulses and get a pretty good idea about that side of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then also, um, did he have other signs of venous insufficiency? You know, for instance, we're we're concentrating on his left leg. Uh, but what does his right leg look like? Mm-hmm. You know, do, does he have you know varicose veins there, or spider veins, or does he have swelling or skin problems? You know that kind of thing. Do you find it interesting because people ask me this time to time, um, and and I've had uh, venous problems with both legs, some one leg a little bit more than the others, uh, but it's not uncommon, is it? I mean that you know. A, you could have one leg perfectly normal and everything's fine, and the other the other one's got vein issues. Yeah, we and, see that all yeah, the time. Yeah. Uh, or, or conversely, maybe both legs have venous insufficiency mm-hmm. and just one of them is, you know, displaying it in symptoms and superficially mm-hmm. yeah. so much yeah. more than the other. That's really what we see a lot of. Uh, and, and I think it's just because of, you know, one leg or the other is further along in the timeline mm-hmm of, you know, the whole process of chronic venous insufficiency because, you know, unfortunately it is a process that just kind of slowly gets worse with time. uh, And, uh, you know, there's not a lot of things that we can do to impact it just by, you know, lifestyle and, you know, diet and all that sort of stuff. Uh, Do you remember what you did turn up on on his other leg? Uh, Yeah, well, his other leg actually looked pretty normal. Mm -hmm. Um, We didn't really see any, uh, you know... uh, secondary uh, you know signs of venous insufficiency um as it turned out we didn't really do a full exam of his other leg we're going to mm-hmm. do you know we'll, that's something that we'll do uh, in the future mm-hmm. we uh, we looked a little bit more closely obviously at his, as at the affected leg uh but uh yeah he didn't have too much uh in the line of you know those other signs uh in the right mm-hmm. leg and i think you know for the most part he um he had uh, he had a little bit of swelling, I think, in the on that left side. Obviously, some of it was from the inflammation mm-hmm. from this, you know, phlebitis that he had come up with. Uh, but and he uh, he obviously had had you know fairly prominent varicose veins in mm-hmm. that area, but they were being hidden by this you know the inflamed you know uh, area that uh, you know happened because of the phlebitis but uh otherwise his leg looked relatively normal yeah not not a lot of other signs okay so now when you did when you were able to start sticking a title on the on the problems you know, uh, there there was more than one i mean you know there's more than one issue that he was dealing with not just redness or the swelling uh what what were some of the other uh, was he displaying symptoms? Were they painful? I mean, uh, he, he he certainly didn't like the way they looked. No, well, no, no. Mm-hmm. He, he he was definitely symptomatic. Yeah, yeah. Um, he and you know, in the in the spectrum of pe- of people that present with superficial venous thrombosis, he had a pretty good case of it. Yeah. You know, he was he was pretty symptomatic. Mm-hmm. He was uncomfortable. There's no question mm-hmm. about it. He was very tender. Uh, you know, when you tried to, you know, touch around the area, the the involved area, it was very, very tender. Um, he actually came in walking with a little bit of a limp, you know, so yeah. uh, so he, he was uncomfortable. There's no question about it. You know, it. it's interesting to me because you would be amazed at how a grown man can cry because I've always been, I, I think, uh, pretty tolerant of pain, uh, you know, pretty, you know, pain, pain. Um, and, and yet I found myself... I, I don't want to seem like I'm a tough guy. I mean, if it hurts, for heaven's sakes, let somebody know it hurts. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, sure. Does it, this hurt? Nah. You know? <laughs> yeah. yeah, it really does. I just don't know. Admit it. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah, that stops us from doing so many things. Yeah. Um, so you know, as we usually do, we did an ultrasound. Uh, ultrasound is one of our, one of our favorite things to do uh, because it's so useful in defining these kinds of things. But 
Um, so uh, the the ultrasound we use to f- you know figure out exactly what's going on, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, you know the ultrasound will show us you know now even though that that area is very inflamed and ident- you know swollen and red and etc. Uh, and you can't really see the the varicose veins. We are able to appreciate them with the ultrasound. Mm-hmm. So doing the ultrasound, we see that he had a cluster of. Uh, varicose veins there they were yeah. clotted off they were thrombosed which is what happens um and uh so and, and it was it was fairly focal so the which is one of the important things um where does the clot go where, where is the clot yeah, currently say, present yeah where is it yeah, yeah. so the, the clot is in that cluster of varicose veins and what we want to make sure is that the process is just in that cluster of varicose veins. We we want to make sure that it's not like moving mm. uh, either in either direction along a superficial uh, uh, vein, uh, or or nor do we want to you know, or or we want to make sure that it isn't the clot isn't you know slowly moving toward uh, the deep venous sure. system. Yeah. That would be the other very very important feature. Now, when I say moving, I'm not saying the clot itself is moving, but uh, you know the mo- the we want to make sure the clot is not extending. Okay. You know, yeah. uh, as as when these things form, uh, sometimes they form and they they don't get any bigger. Sometimes they form and then with time, uh, and uh, as the as the flow is impeded in those areas, the, the you know the blood slows down, it becomes more static and uh, the clot tends to get bigger. And, uh, you know, that's one of the things that we need to monitor and make sure that it's not, you know, moving into areas where we don't want it to go. Yeah. um, Interestingly enough, um, I do know that it'll probably come up. But was there a could there have been a probability of things worsening had he gone on that trip without getting consulted? Uh, Yeah. If he if if this would have been more extensive. Mm -hmm. Um, and had he gone out without it being treated in a particular, in one way or another, yeah. uh, specifically as it, it pertains to uh, blood thinners, and, and we will talk about that. Uh, but uh, could it have gotten worse uh, to the point of being, you know, even life threatening? Absolutely. Yeah. So the sure. reason I, the reason I ask that is because obviously. Um, you know, if you can predict something, it's one thing, but these things seem to be kind of unpredictable. Mm-hmm. And so if you are going to be in harm's way, this guy, probably knock on wood, will never know if he was going to get any worse because who wants to be, you know, a, you know, seven days away from land mm-hmm. and, and, and really be in, in, in deep hot water? You're right. Yeah. Sure. Or cold water, if it were, lots of water. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, our, our treatment for him was... Uh, uh, we started him on uh, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medications, uh, and that's, uh, you know, usually we use ibuprofen, uh, you know, Advil, Motrin, or, uh, you know, Aleve, some yeah. some non-steroidal, you know, the medication that's, that's going to attack or going to settle down that inflammatory process. Um, we do uh, warm, moist compresses mainly as a symptomatic yeah. kind of, uh, or, you know, just to, to treat the symptoms. It doesn't really, you know, yeah. make anything resolve quicker, but it does help the symptoms. And then uh, very, very importantly is compression stockings. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we, we got the guy into compression stockings. And um, uh, so, and then he, he was going to monitor, he, mm-hmm. you know, he had a couple days before he was actually leaving. So he w- was going to be monitoring his monitoring his you know progress and his status and making sure that it's you know uh kind of in the, heading in the direction sure. of, of resolving uh and he was going to be able to do that i think uh fairly um uh, reliably over the next 48 hours before he was going to have to leave i must tell you as as often as this comes up i can't believe it uh everybody that that's listened to the program and certainly a lot of my friends that have listened first of all because they wanted to see what i was up to and then they start thinking wait a minute my legs are like these guys are talking about. Um, I think that it, it's it's pretty interesting that people want to know kind of where they are with it, you know. Mm-hmm. And, and and when you say compression stockings, it's sometimes for me in the beginning it was extremely counterintuitive because I thought, wait a minute, my legs are swollen, and now I'm going to put something tight on them. Isn't that going to make them more swollen? You know, what I mean, yeah. And, and then the other question is, uh, when somebody comes in and presents like it is, uh, is there a danger if they get traumatized? blunt trauma or something 
that 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 could be a, a very serious thing because the area that which you get hit was vulnerable already. In mm-hmm. other words, there were mm-hmm. things going on in underneath that skin mm-hmm. that would be dramatically uh, made worse by by a, by a blow by by trauma. Well, yeah, and that's one of the, one of the scenarios that we uh, we see for mm-hmm. sure yeah. uh, is that people will come in uh, post you know traumatic you know event. Yeah. I mean, no matter how big or small. Uh, and it might be, and that might be the thing that sort of prompted the yeah. phlebitis to occur. And we'll talk about that a little bit more um, uh, later. But uh, so then the other the other aspect of therapy is uh, does he need to be on blood thinners? You know, I mean, he, he does have he's got a, a clot, he's got a blood clot in a vein, and you know, people yeah. are people have heard of you know uh, people being put on uh, blood thinners for that type of thing he didn't really need it um and some people do with superficial venous thrombosis and we'll talk mm-hmm. about that mm-hmm. uh, also uh in a little while but uh, so that's the that's the other question you know does the patient need anticoagulation he did not mm-hmm. because of the fact that it was uh, you know the process was very focal uh, it wasn't extending over a long length within the superficial yeah. venous system, mm-hmm. and it wasn't uh, getting close to the deep venous system. So, which is is probably the thing yeah, that we get concerned very, about most. Yeah, that's really interesting. And gang, you know, a lot of you guys out there are thinking, "Gee, I'm glad I listened today because usually he's talking about ladies' varicose veins." No, no, no. This is an equal opportunity uh, condition. And today's case studies both happen to be men. So, I mean, uh, you, you talk about the interesting thing that we that we come across. Uh, if you are like this guy, if if there's any shred of you think you might be this guy's cousin, uh, thank him for waking up to the fact that he needed to come get a look at. It. Yeah, yeah. We may not have had the, sure. the opportunity to talk about it otherwise. Br- <laughs> right. Yeah. So anyway, so what it, what is this uh, SVT stuff all about? Yeah. You know, the, and like I mentioned before, um, it's not a benign process by any stretch of the imagination. And I think that physicians uh, in the past were kind of taught to that it you know can be minimized, mm-hmm. that it's not really something that needs to be concerned about. Uh, but uh, I think the more that we are learning about the process of superficial venous thrombosis, treating more of it. And investigating really these people when they come in with SVT, we're finding that hey, um, you know there there are potential dangers. There are a certain number of people who are going to develop deep venous thrombosis because of their SVT, because of their phlebitis. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there's even going to be some people who will subsequently also develop pulmonary embolism. So, mm-hmm. um, and that's Yikes. something that people die from, yeah, yeah. you know, all Same. the time. So, yeah. so it's not, um, uh, it's not the benign process that I think that we, you know, once thought and uh, and hopefully we're treating it a fair bit more aggressive than aggressively than we used to, and 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 again this is why we're talking about this today because mm-hmm. you know I think a lot of people this kind of thing might happen to and they may not have as bad of a uh, of yeah, an episode yeah. as this guy did that really prompted mm-hmm. him to come in. Uh, sometimes it can be you know much less symptomatic. Uh, but that that doesn't mean that it's any less potentially yeah. dangerous. So, you know, we, that's kind of stuff we'd like to talk about. I mean, this is everyday sort of thing. Yeah, you I was going to say, at 55, he's drawing from his life experience, mm-hmm. you know, and how he's felt. Sure. And, and now he's getting to a point maybe what, you know, maybe w- when he was 20 years younger, he and his parents, mom or dad, whoever had the worst case of venous disease, may or may not have even talked about it mm-hmm. because it, it wasn't talked about, at, you know, for for a long time, right? Right. And especially for men, we just, if we can't see it, it's not there. You know, so yeah. if I got a bad leg, I'll just wear long pants, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, uh, so anyway, so what is SVT? And this guy, this guy had a very, um, you know, textbook sort of uh, look and uh, presentation. But, you know, it's, it's usually a firm, tender, painful, reddened area uh, on the leg most often, but it can happen in other areas. Um, and, and, you know, the, uh, the clue often, most of the time, is the fact that the patient had varicose veins in that area where they developed the phlebitis, and that's a, that, that's a, that's a big arrow for us. Yeah, I, you know, I want to tell you, and as a patient, I, I really agree with what Doc is saying here, because I know that there were some parts of my legs where the condition that I got treated for w- was pretty severe, and, 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 and it's gone now. But that still does leave 
that area a little bit vulnerable. I think that there's something that happens when you get disease, and even though you clear it, that leg's, I don't know what I'm going to say, never to come back the way it was, but it certainly can be expected. you got to keep an eye on it because once it was there, you've said this before, mm-hmm. you know, your, your treatments get rid of that vein that's causing a problem, but it doesn't get the problem fixed for the problem of veins. Another mm-hmm. vein is going to come along probably mm-hmm. down the road and get this, the same treatment. So how much, how much trauma can you have to one leg before it gets really bad? Right. You know? Yeah. Good question. <laughs> so, um, anyway, so sometimes in this area where where the phlebitis occurs, sometimes we can feel you know a cord underneath the mm-hmm. underneath that inflamed mass. In him, it, he was just so tender, I couldn't really even wow. uh, appreciate yeah, it. Yeah. But uh, you know, sometimes you'll feel the cord of of the vein that's actually thrombosed. Was he actually uncomfortable with clothing? Hitting? I mean, you, we, you've talked before. Sometimes people get so symptomatic, mm-hmm. and they're they're that anything can irritate him, even even a gala skirt or, yeah. or just touching a chair or something. Uh, yeah, for sure. Um, and, uh, he, you know, he came in in shorts, so mm-hmm. I, I don't know. But probably it would have yeah, been irritating yeah, yeah, for yeah. him. There, yeah, for sure. Um, so most hap- most of the time this, this is something that happens in the lower extremities, but it, it can happen in the arms. Um, and, uh, sometimes even people will have dilated, uh, veins on the trunk, Mm -hmm. you know, the lower abdomen, uh, or, or the, the flank. And, uh, those can also become, you know, acutely thrombosed and develop uh, phlebitis. So it does happen in other parts of the body. When it happens in the arm, usually it has to do with, um, a, uh, IV catheter, you know the the usual uh, the usual scenario of uh, you know uh, phlebitis or superficial venous thrombosis in an arm vein is somebody was in the hospital mm-hmm. they had an IV in their arm and right, it right. was in for you know a week or whatever and uh, then either they're still in the hospital and it happens or they go home and the vein be, you know because of the irritation from that uh, IV catheter. In the vein, it'll thrombose, and it can become uh, very similar. I mean, mm-hmm. it can, becomes red and firm and inflamed, and uh, and we treat those in a very similar fashion. So usually in the arm, it has to do with that type of thing. Um, but uh, again, most of the time, um, it uh, it's happening in the legs. And, you know, it's uh, basically it's just a superficial vein that clots off for one reason or another, uh, and uh, the clot, you know, forms in those dilated veins and, uh, you know, progresses to whatever extent it's going to progress. And it creates inflammation. And that's when the whole process kind of then start, starts to snowball. Now, so so we're moving here, gang. This 55-year-old guy comes in with, with redness, with swelling, with with pain issues and, and gets looked at. Uh, and, and obviously you want to say, okay, uh, very well, now we know what the guy's got. Um, what are we going to do about that? You know, I mean, mm-hmm. I mean, at what stage does that uh, that thrombosis we're talking about get the attention where it gets it needs and get and gets treatment? Well, there, I guess there, you know, there's two aspects to that. Mm-hmm. Obviously, we we we're, we're treating him. You know, we we started to treat him immediately mm-hmm. with anti-inflammatories, compression stockings, uh, warm moist compresses, mm-hmm. that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, so then, then the second stage to evaluation and treatment will be then at some, at some point in the future when uh, we're going to do a full evaluation mm. of his venous system. Oh, okay, I got you. Because, yeah, yeah. you know, he, he had varicose veins. Well, varicose veins almost always indicate underlying venous insufficiency. Sure. Now, did we, we, did we look at that when he came in for his ultrasound? No, we didn't. Mm. Uh, we didn't do a full, you know, uh, venous functional, you know, study. We just wanted to make sure we wanted to, to define where that phlebitis was. Number one, number two, we wanted to make sure that he did not have a, a DVT, gotcha. yeah, uh, or was was threatened with DVT. So, um, so yeah, there will be in the future, uh, you know, kind of a second stage, and and we need to treat it so that this kind of thing doesn't happen again. Yeah, incidentally, and I think this is neat. Uh, one of the things that happens, especially at Vein Clinics of Hawaii, and don't forget it's veinclinicsofhawaii.com. 
Um, and even during the pandemic and all the other ancillary problems, uh, social distancing is being well uh, made. The, the sanitation level and the, and the treatment uh, rooms at, uh, at, at vein clinics is, is really terrific. Uh, but what I'm getting at is obviously, you know, um, trying to keep things isolated is one thing. And once you're there, it would appear to me as I say, uh, does that ultrasound lead you to say, you know what, we better look over here too, because what's coming in here is coming from over there. Let's go see what's what's going on over there. Yeah, it's amazing the the diagnostic, you know, capabilities of this stuff it continues to amaze me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> I mean, the ultrasound is a wonderful yeah. machine. Yeah. Uh, so, so why does it happen? Well, uh, in the case uh, in in the case of a varicose vein. Um, you know, again, uh, for whatever reason, uh, you know, the blood started to become static, clotted off. And when blood clots in a vein, it kind of, it can develop kind of an inflammatory process that, um, you know, just, uh, you know, snowballs and gets worse and worse. Uh, and, uh, and that's when the, the, that area becomes very red and swollen and tender, Mm -hmm. Uh, the, um, the, uh, it, because of the increased pressure in the, uh, varicose vein, this can also lead to an inflammatory process mm-hmm. within the wall of the vein and, uh, bef- you know, before the phlebitis occurs, yeah. you know, the, the constant pressure in, uh, causes, uh, inflammatory process in the inner lining of the vein in that in- inflammatory process of the vein lining itself mm-hmm can cause clot to form and then sure. the, yeah. uh, you know, the vein clots off and becomes, uh, you know, phlebitic. Uh, this, uh, the inflammation then can lead to, you know, further propagation of the clot. And that's the other thing that we have to be concerned about is how far is this clot going to be propagated? Um, and uh, in, in varicose veins, also another component is not only the inflammatory process that's going on, but also stasis it, the you know as as any vein becomes dilated mm-hmm. and especially if it's a superficial vein that don't, they, they don't carry a lot of blood so the um, you know the the rate of flow is not you know is it, not it quick. Doesn't, doesn't it doesn't it almost stop sometimes he, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely it, so yeah. Um, so as that as that inner lining becomes inflamed uh, and then as the blood becomes more and more static, mm. then, uh, you know, it uh, clots off suddenly and then it becomes uh, symptomatic. We've, we've talked in the last couple of programs, folks, about how much blood you have in your body, depending on your size and, and all that. And and the the real amazing part is how quickly it goes through your system and how many times it does that. I think that we everybody thinks, well, yeah, everybody's got two, three gallons of blood. No, there's not a lot of blood in there when you think about it, especially if you're a small person. Yeah. And, but but it's going around pretty fast. Yeah. And that's why when you said earlier that when you have um, uh, uh, something given to you intravenously, mm-hmm. I always thought, well, you know what? You, you've explained over the years that the veins are actually bringing blood that's kind of used already back to the heart to get replenished. So why would mm-hmm. we want it? You know, why would, you know, well, yeah. it's, it's not that it's all bad, is it? I mean, a lot of it, it, it's just traveling through your body so fast. Yeah. Parts of it are getting shunted off and fixed and come back in. Yeah. Yeah. yeah well, no, it's, it's not that it's not all bad. It's, it's all good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. blood, blood is, uh, you know, that's one of the, you know, wonders of the human body. It just yeah. goes back through the heart to pick up some more oxygen and some yeah. more, and some more, uh, and I guess propulsion. Yeah. Because the heart's pumping it out faster than the veins can bring it back up. <laughs> right. So, um, so can, can this happen in veins that are, that, you know, if you don't have varicose veins, can that ha- can phlebitis happen? Yeah, it can. Yeah. And usually that's, uh, you know, some sort of uh, traumatic injury often. You know, we, we hear that also, that story. Uh, gee, I was, yeah. got hit by a yeah. soccer ball or I yeah. hit the, you know, the coffee table or whatever. Uh, and uh, that is the inflammatory process yeah, yeah. that then leads to uh, superficial veins clotting. So, you know, sometimes you see baseball players uh, that have these forever. I mean, yeah. you know, I mean, especially if you're an active person. I'm not just talking about the sliding, but I'm talking about getting hit by a thrown ball or, or you know, I mean, a baseball thrown at 90 miles an hour by a guy on a mound. It's uh, it's a it's it's a rocket. It's a projectile. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. 
So what are the risks uh, of, or the risk factors that uh, are out there that uh, may lead someone to develop uh, superficial venous thrombosis? Well, uh, obviously, you know, the, the presence of varicose veins mm-hmm. is, you know, uh, a big part of it and, you know, the underlying venous insufficiency. But in addition, um, the uh, any of those risk factors that might lead to deep venous thrombosis are also risks for mm. superficial venous thrombosis. So, you know, what are the what are the things that we think about? Well, immobilization. Yep. Uh and again that goes that goes back to uh blood, you know, not moving very quickly, you know, static blood uh, clots easier. Uh people with cancer. Mm. Uh, you know, for um, for a variety of, uh, you know, chemical kind of reasons, yeah. people with malignancy uh, uh, are what we call hypercoagulable. Their, their blood clots easier than it should, and they develop SVT and DVT. Pregnancy, oral contraceptives, uh, intravenous catheters, as we just mm-hmm. mentioned, uh, age, obesity, and arterial occlusive disease. So those are some of the things that uh, may be a risk factor for people to develop, uh, you know, phlebitis at some point uh, throughout their lifetime. And then there's this thing that we refer to as uh, inherited thrombophilias. Uh, and, oh, boy. Oh, boy. And, Want, gone right by my pay grade. <laughs> thrombophilia. Th- thrombophilia. Okay. And um, that just means that the blood clot's too easy. Mm-hmm. And uh, and that that's an inherited thing. That's, you know, a genetically predetermined kind of uh, process. Uh, and, uh, you know, some people have the genetics that make their, mm-hmm. you know, blood clot more easily. If the blood clots more easily, then they're going to be, uh, more susceptible to, uh, you know, blood clotting of, uh, in any location, either DVT or superficial venous thrombosis. And if it's, if it's really bad, the also arterial thrombosis that luckily we don't see that very often, but, um, so, um, wh- how, how prevalent is SVT? Well, the exact incidence, we don't really know because, uh, again, I think there's uh, plenty of people out there who have an episode of phlebitis and just ignore yeah, it. Yeah, they just shrug it off. Yeah, and yeah, and yeah, they, yeah. they might take some medication mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, it, it, it goes away because eventually it will go away. Mm-hmm. Um, and especially if it's a minor kind of episode, uh, you know, it doesn't, uh, you know, the body kind of uh, tamps mm-hmm. down that inflammation even without medication and, uh, you know, they go on. So um, we don't we don't really know, but we, uh, you know, it's estimated that SVT is probably three to times three to two to three uh, times more common than DVT. Hmm. Um, And uh, more importantly, approximately 25% of uh, superficial venous thrombosis, as we alluded to before, is associated with deep venous thrombosis. So in in there, that's the crux of it right there. But, you know, you, you said the other, the smallest number are the ones that are the most severe, right? As far, however... Uh, the severity can it can it happen quickly? I mean, did, we, we've talked many times about vein disease mm-hmm. and the six stages of it, yep. and and the progression from one stage to another. Does this condition also have stages? Uh, not in the same way. Okay. No, we we don't really stage or. You know, there isn't a, there isn't a way to sort of you know quantify or um, you know a quality sort of. Uh, you know, uh, gauge that we talk about with respect to uh, SVT. We, you know, when when we're describing SVT, as with DVT, we sort of talk about the anatomical extent of it. Yeah. You know, where yeah. where where do we see it, and where is it going? Uh, but no, there's there's not that same sort of process. But so so again, you know, and that that's the that's the crux of it right there. You know, people with phlebitis, they need to have it evaluated. Mm-hmm. They need to go to their doctor. And, um, you know, they need to, you know, report this type of thing because, you know, uh, one fourth of them, you know, one out of four Mm. are going to develop a DVT because of this superficial thrombosis. Uh, And, you know, as we talk about all the time, DVT uh, slash PE uh, is a is a fatal can be a fatal problem. Oh, boy. So uh, so that's that's the thing that we need to think about. And um, and then. It's a. There's. Uh, it's felt that about five percent of SVT will actually be associated with a pulmonary embolism. Yeah, which so, we really want to avoid. Yeah, now right. you're talking spooky. Which, you know, yeah, some yeah. of them can be fatal. Yeah, yeah. So, um, 
And, you know, these numbers are not hard and fast, but I think, uh, you know, again, as we are learning more and more about SVT and the repercussions, um, you know, it's it's slowly becoming clearer to us that, uh, again, it's a much bigger deal than we thought. So um, we uh, we really have to do all we can to, you know, to get these people in, see them, evaluate them, and treat them uh, in a way that's uh, most appropriate. You know, that's one thing that you talked a little bit earlier about, and that was being able to identify what's going on and then, uh, you know, certain, certain types of uh, non-steroidal painkillers and compression and this and that. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't look as though you're reaching for the for the satchel and the and the scalpel and the stitches yeah. uh, for this something however i'm i'm wondering at are there also surgical procedures there are in um in, in rare cases okay and and usually it's not um it's not just a, a simple run of the mill kind of uh, superficial venous thrombosis <laughs> now um you often where where an SVT may need to get up uh, you know uh, remedied mm-hmm. in a surgical sort of fashion would be in those people who were in the hospital, had an yeah. IV catheter, yeah. and not only did they develop a venous thrombosis, but it got infected. Mm-hmm. So, you know, mm-hmm. if if it's an infected clot in a vein, then sometimes we have to approach that surgically. Well, we, we've been looking at a lot of people because of the pandemic that have been bedridden or, or, or stay at home for a long time. And one, you know, earlier you were talking about the development of these conditions can be made worse by the lack of activity. I mean, mm-hmm. if you're if you're cooped up at home, right, or, or you're or you're you know worried about COVID, or you're worried about other things, you may not pay attention to this stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and then I'm I'm guessing it's just sitting there percolating and getting worse. Right. Yeah. And I think that if you and this would pertain to not only SVT but also DVT, mm-hmm. uh, you course. know, uh, people who are spending much more time at home. Uh, if they have those other risk factors, you know, mm-hmm. if they have some of the risk factors that uh, go along with uh, deep venous thrombosis, then they have, they have to be concerned you got about a that. Bit of a lot of things, yeah. and um, you know, they have to think about: gee, how are how how are they going to, you know, uh, factor in a little bit of activity into their daily routine, even though they have to, you know, remain uh, at home mm-hmm. or uh, isolated in one way or another. Uh, that those are the types of things that people need to, to be thinking about for sure. So um, the diagnosis of SVT, you know, basically it's a clinical one uh, initially. Uh, and uh, I think, you know, most of the time yeah. people come in with a, a pretty, you know, straightforward story. And, you know, we, before we did the ultrasound, we, we knew what was going on with this guy. Um, but, uh, you know, the redness and the inflammation, yeah. uh, sometimes people will go to the emergency room or, um, you know, be evaluated uh, somewhere and, uh, the redness and inflammation may be misinterpreted as infection. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, and, and often people will get placed on antibiotics. Uh, typically antibiotics are not needed, you know, for mm-hmm. this uh, particular process. It's mainly just the anti-inflammatories, but um, local swelling, uh, generalized swelling even of the entire limb can be seen, uh, especially if deep venous system is involved. Uh, but uh, the redness and the inflammation, usually that'll resolve over the course of several weeks. Are, are most of these, Doc, uh, uh, below the knee? Yes. Yeah, yeah. I was wondering about that before because somebody said some of the treatment, obviously compression stockings, usually the best ones are only knee high. Uh, I mean, I know there are ones that go further up, but from what I understand and, and trying them myself, they're they're a little bit more difficult to deal with and they don't seem to have the compression at the top yeah. as the ones do below the calf or below the knee, I should say. Yeah. Um, yeah, I would say uh, the majority of SVT is below the knee. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's probably a reflection of the fact that uh, varicose veins are more common. Yeah, exactly. There you go. Um, however, uh, you know, b- plenty of people have uh, varicose veins in the thigh, uh, and it can happen there. Uh, SVT will sometimes uh, extend up the great saphenous vein mm-hmm. into the thigh. 
uh, and that's also superficial venous thrombosis. Uh, and, uh, you know, those are, those are the types that we, you know, get a little more concerned about because uh, as it travels up or as it extends up the uh, saphenous vein in the thigh, it's getting closer and closer to the deep system, and that's what we, uh, you know, get nervous about. Typically, uh, just real quick here, we talked earlier that uh, a lot of times your primary care physician, your PCP, is a great quarterback, and they know exactly which which one of their team members is, is a referral. It, it, does this one seem to get referred mostly to to uh, you know venous specialists like yourself, or does sometimes uh, it, does it get to a dermatologist and the dermatologist coach says, "Nope, not me. It's got to go somewhere else." How, what's the process of elimination on who is going to be treating this guy? I, I think anybody who feels comfortable treating it, mm-hmm. uh, you know, they don't. Uh, they don't necessarily have to be referred to us, although mm-hmm. we're you know more than happy sure. to to you know do the diagnosis and you know handle that patient uh, getting them through. So, um, but uh, yeah, there's plenty of uh, primary care docs that uh, are comfortable, you know, making the diagnosis, mm-hmm. ordering the ultrasound, ruling out sure, GBT, yeah. and uh, getting them through that acute phase. But I think the important thing is that uh, you know they have to remember that that's just the first yeah. stage. You know, they had the they, they developed this SVT because of a reason. The reason is usually underlying venous insufficiency. And, uh, you know, then consequently, that's kind of when we should Mm -hmm. get involved and, you know, uh, evaluate the patient from that standpoint. Uh, But uh, so, you know, usually these things will, you know, resolve over two or three weeks. You know, the redness goes away. Sometimes um, that area can be so inflamed and it can take a little longer. And it also it it almost takes on a uh, a more fibrotic kind of uh, texture, Uh, you know, so it takes even longer to resolve. Leather skin. Sure. Yeah. Uh, Incidentally, before we lose lose the minutes of the show. Uh, this guy's 55, was expected in a couple of days to go out on a 14-day trip. Um, how has that impacted his life as far as now that he's being, you know, examined and treated? Uh, does he have to wait a while? Does he have to wait a while before he goes out? Gets back out to sea. Uh, yeah. No, I think that we were all comfortable enough, and he, he was comfortable enough going back out. Mm-hmm. Um, did he have did he have facility to come back in if he needed to? Yeah, but oh, I think yeah. he, he really <laughs> he really wanted to go to work, yeah, yeah. and um, so uh, he uh, he kind of you know he was going to you know take the medication, to wear the compression stockings diligently, and uh, you know monitor. Don't get lazy now if you're listening. Don't get lazy. Yeah, wear those socks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, monitor the situation himself, and and he was going to be fine. Uh, he was uh, his his work uh, type was not real active. Mm-hmm. You know, it wasn't real physical. Okay. So uh, you know, he I, he was going to do fine, and and I think uh, again we were comfortable. He was comfortable. Yeah. More importantly, and, and I'm glad you brought that up because I mean, in the same place where he was, there could be somebody else that is way more physical in his end of the job, depending on what the vessel is u- being used for and everything. And I and would you be really concerned if somebody went out in, in irregardless, in spite of the fact that they are they got an issue because now they are at risk for trauma or something to make that considerably worse. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. Yeah. They, they, they yeah, could, yeah. if they could, they could very easily be subjected to some sort of either physical activity or physical inactivity. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. going to make the, the well, situation. I, I think that that's the big worry that everybody's got now. And, you know, we could get into doing a whole show on the pandemic, but there's a lot of unknown factors. Is, and I'm wondering if down the road, we talked about this a little bit earlier in the piece is that there aren't long-term conditions, um, venous conditions and others that might be attributable someday back to this, to this disease, to mm-hmm. this pandemic. Yeah, well, I think, you know, we know, we know already that COVID uh, in, in various, you know, settings, it, you know, it's a very inflammatory yeah. kind yeah. of process that's, you know, going throughout your yeah. entire body. And those people do have vascular thromboses occurring you know, either venous or arterial in, in mm, some yeah. uh, situations. So, uh, yeah, unfortunately, hypercoagulable state mm. is uh, a very common thing with, uh, you know, people that are, you know, very ill with uh, COVID-19. Yeah, and I know it's impossible, but obviously just using this guy's prognosis, um, now that he's, he's, he's reached out and figured out a way, as you can see, some of these treatments that you're suggesting as they, as they work, Mm-hmm. Um, what's the, what's the, what's the, the intended or the hope for outcome? Yeah. 
Uh, well, his, the prognosis for his, you know, the Venus status, I think, is very good. Uh, you know, this, like I said, this uh, episode will resolve. Um, and, uh, you know, mo- most of the time it resolves fairly yeah. completely. Um, I think the important thing will then be for us to get him back in mm-hmm. at some point, yeah. you know, hopefully when he comes back from being out for two weeks, he'll yeah. come back yeah. and see us. Um, and uh, again, he's going to need a full workup because uh, invariably we find venous insufficiency in these mm-hmm. patients. And we want to treat that so that this type of thing doesn't happen no, again. No. You know, and, and, and we got, we also have to remember that people with venous insufficiency uh, you know, there's also an increased incidence of DVT in those people. Yeah, and that DVT, believe me, uh, is going to be one of our next cases for sure. We do talk about them all the time, and they they can be uh, they can be pretty nasty. But the good news is that, I, and maybe we're all getting a little bit more in touch with ourselves. Mm-hmm. Maybe if anything, this pandemic and wanting to stay healthy has affected many of us. To, in in other words, I remember telling you about an old. Uh, since retired dermatologist friend of mine that used to say, check your birthday suit on your birthday. Yeah. You know, and, and it really does go once you've got a venous condition, it just doesn't it just plain make good sense to get it looked at every now and again just oh, to yeah. make sure you're in good shape. Yeah. 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 I, we, we, we do that. We, yeah. we, we do surveillance all the time and it's important to do that for sure. We hope you've enjoyed spending some time with us today. Remember all that you hear here are, uh, uh uh, is from uh, the medical director of Vein Clinics of Hawaii. That's Dr. Randall Julep. We want to thank you for spending part of your time with us and uh, tell others. We'll be back again next week at the same time. Healthy legs, healthy veins, and that's what we want to see. Well, that's our program for today, and we certainly hope you enjoyed meeting us. Please come back next week for our next episode. And in the meanwhile, to learn more, please visit our interactive website, VeinClinicsOfHawaii.com. That's VeinClinicsOfHawaii.com.